Hello to girlfriends and welcome to the channel. So in this series we are going to be looking at Meng's D9R Armoured Bulldozer. Um, so it, by the outlook of this kit it looks absolutely uh, fantastic. So in this uh, first video of the series we will look um, at uh, the kit. There's quite a lot of uh, stuff to go through uh, that's in the kit. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of stuff in the kit. Uh, it's quite a lot more than I actually expected. Uh, but then again, I probably shouldn't have ex <laughs> expected it to be a lot of stuff because it's it looks to be quite a hefty kit. Um, and to be fair, the detailing so far looks absolutely fantastic. So there's not really much for me to, to say uh, at the start of this one. Uh, so we'll get straight into it. We'll have a look at the kit and I'll show you some details. And before we do that, grab yourself a brew and a bicky and um, enjoy looking at this kit. Right then, so let's have a look at this kit. So we will start with the instructions, as always. Um, so quite a thick book, 20 pages, include the front and back. Um, so you've got a bit of information about uh, the dozer which is in I'm assuming I'm assuming Japanese could be Chinese I don't I, I don't know uh, English or probably both Japanese and Chinese I, I really don't know um, and Russian so they are um, very nicely um, you know laid out very nicely detailed tells you everything you need to know really um, with, with the parts being cut and glued and painted and whatever. Um, also to start off with, you've got the top here is uh, three different um, versions or what I should say it's more three different markings really. Um, I couldn't, I had a quick look through so I couldn't see any real differences uh, between A, B and C. Um, so, not quite, uh, not quite sure. Uh, with that, maybe when we get into the build, we'll probably find out um, there. But yeah, so it's nicely, uh, nicely uh, detailed. Tells you everything you need. Says everything you need to know. Paint callouts, um, parts that need to be removed, and obviously how they they go together. We've even got a uh, nice detailing on how. Um, the window frames and windows and the door in the case here um, needs to go together as well um, but yeah it seems very easy uh, to follow so this is the first main kit I've, I've done um, so um, but yeah so it seems uh, relatively uh, easy uh, to follow got some pipe work to come in uh, at the back, um, I do know here there is a um, photo etch replacement within this uh, for that part. Um, but admittedly, all they've just said, oh, that's just been this part. So yeah, so it's not a replacement part actually. By the looks of it, is actually a photo etch piece um, that goes in should know anyway um, but um, but yeah no it's not replacement it's actually a photo it's part um, tracks how they go together uh, so we've got some plastic tracks to go in uh, with this uh, kit and yeah so as we're getting towards the ends um, exhaust um, handrails and all sorts of little details that need to need to go in again as we're getting towards the end it all goes together. Right at the back is uh, a parts call out um, with all your sprues. Very, very smallly, um, it tells you um, what uh, the number parts are as well as what the sprue is. Um, so, yeah, even even I have a slight difficulty in seeing that. So, if you do struggle a bit, get a magnifying glass if you want it, if you need to or want to. Uh, use that part and again on the back finishes off what else is within the kit 
So we've got a little leaflet of uh, the colour schemes. So we've got the um, American uh, US Marine Corps of Iraq in 2004. Uh, and the other two are for um, the IDF, uh, Combat Engineers Battalion uh, in Libya of 2006. Uh, and the same uh, for the other one. Um, so all that's really, if I remember rightly when I looked at this earlier, was just the number. Um, 93 is um, of uh, Combat Engineering School. Uh, so I'm going to say that the 92 is what I'd say was like obviously more operational. Um, but yeah, so both of them are pretty much the same. Um, you do have a different uh, like registration uh, that goes on the side. I think there's a photo which part for that to go uh, on the front and back of the cab. Um, but yeah, pretty much identical, um, the last two. Um, so there's those three schemes that you can choose from um, there. I am planning on doing one of the two um, IDF ones. I want to do the olive uh, drab rather than um, the one from Iraq. So yeah, that's, that's it for the paint. So I'll have a look at some of the uh, other bits that we get with it. So we've got a hose uh, for the hose, obviously. Um, it's not vinyl, it's like an actual like, um, rubber, uh, so that's nice. Um, it's going to be a bit better, more better flex than you know, uh, the vinyl ones because sometimes you can get a kink if you, if you push this right in. It's still got a nice curve on it, so I don't think there's anything going to be tight, but, um, but yeah, so that's nice. Uh, we've got two uh, sets of windscreens, uh, clear and a blue tint. Um, the clear one, I believe, is going to be more for uh, like the civil uh, version, so the Caterpillar. Um, and it's yellow livery, so you probably use that. And this one is going to be sort of more eight in the sunshine. Um, comes with a clear film uh, that's wrapped all the way around. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do the windscreens because I don't really want to have to try and um, mask them because there's going to be some funny corners and I did see somebody else use this film, cut out around it, put it in and then later on after painting they just cut the uh, film uh, out and just peeled it away uh, leaving a nice clean windscreen. So, that's something to uh, consider later on. You do have um, the lens uh, covers for the lights, but again, because these are on the blue one, so you're going to want um, these ones, because obviously they are clear. Um, so there we are for the windscreens, very nice, nice and thick. Then we have uh, decals, which I'll do to get out ready. Uh, photo etch which I thought all of, for five minutes I'd lost <laughs> or wasn't within the kit when I was setting up so we have a uh, you know a few numbers there um, I assume those that possibly maybe for the uh, no I don't know what those ones are. I suppose you could just choose your numbers if you wanted to uh, and the two for the designated ones within the cat paid scheme the registrations um, and just some general sort of like information stuff uh, and uh, an instrument panel there as well. So that's our decals. And then we've got our photo etch. Which I'm trying to get there without it reflecting too much. So there's the number plates we was on about earlier, the grill, maybe some foot plating. And that's for uh, jerry cans from the front. I'm not sure what that bit is yet. I'm not sure we'll find out. Um, so yeah, so quite simple photo etch there. There are quite a few um, or a couple of upgrade kits 
uh, for this, um, which I've decided not to use because I don't think, you, to be honest with you, you can get away with them. I don't think you really need them. Um, the kit is very, very nicely detailed. So we'll start with the, um, I was gonna call it a spade and a shovel. Uh, the those apart, oh, they'll come to me later. Um, <laughs> um, which you know, is a nice big chunky piece, looks really good uh, from off the front. But I've noticed having a quick look through this, there are a hell of a lot of um, punch marks, uh, for the ejection marks from the molding. Um, these ones are sunken. So that's gonna be a bit of filling and sanding and filling and sanding again uh, there, but says there's quite a lot, but by the looks of it, most of them don't appear to be in areas that you don't want to meet. Um, so that's definitely going one bit that's gonna be able to look looked at very well, because uh, you are gonna see the back of that. Uh, and in here, I'm not sure what that part's for, but they're gonna be a plane as well. Are sunken as well so they're going to be fun to do as part of the uh, sort of main engine area the cab will sit up here on the drive uh, on the uh, sprocket on the running gear but again you can see on just how nicely detailed um, it is bolts and what uh, that are on there so yeah again massively nice of detail there. Um, look at these two because they're part of the same so we've got a couple of uh, the wheels um, sprocket and uh, hubs for the running gear a couple of jerry can or a jerry can there I should say um, and a couple of the windows you can see they are quite thick and the glass is about the same thickness there for it to uh, sit in and look very accurate. Oh, I've got, never noticed those before but you've got some bolts there. I don't know if these will need to be uh, used uh, at all but with a good sharp knife uh, you'll be able to get underneath those and cut them off if they are required which again I don't know yet but we will find out. So here we've got um, where the main running gear will be housed and we've also got the uh, arm uh, for the, I'm going to stick with shovel uh, for now because <laughs> the words that escaped me. Um, so you've got the arm for that there and I think that might be as well all be for the um, big hooky thing on the back which again I don't know what, I would actually don't know what that's called but I think that's probably the arm for that. Um, there or might still be part of the armature for the um, front shovel. Some of the hydraulic rams uh, there again nicely detailed. Got a couple of uh, the lights there and the a protective housing that goes over it. They are very, these just themselves are very very nicely uh, detailed, very crisp uh, in there um, so yeah so I think with the case of this these two are going to have to be painted completely separately um, until the lenses go in and that will be stuck on top afterwards a little bit of flash on there but it's not very heavy so that should be okay that's just probably the only bit of flash I've seen so far uh, on the kit Some of the uh, windows there and the door. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, really nicely detailed. Um, I know you can have this, oh, the doors open. So yeah, so we've got the hinges there and I'll just clip into that. So that's good because I'm not gonna have this open. I'm not gonna have it so the, um, the roof can lift off, but I'm gonna have the side or front door, sorry and the top hatch uh, open. I was thinking I might have to uh, potentially drill a uh, couple holes in and put some uh, wiring, but by the looks of it, I'm not gonna need to do that. 
Again, some more ejector pin marks uh, on the inside. Not 100% sure on how well they're going to be um, seen. Uh, there's probably a good chance they will be, so I will have to have a go at those. So again, the ease a lot. There's at least eight in those wall parts. There's quite a lot. Those ones are right. I think a little bit so they're not too I don't mind it for the they've got a bit of you know they're a little bit raised that that's that's easier for me uh, rather than trying to trying to uh, you know flatten those off so that it's a little bit of annoying but you, it's one of those things you can't really uh, get away from that sort of thing because they have to be pushed out of the mold um, you know so it's just one of those really Just, just, just on a case of showing you more uh, detail, that's the bottom uh, of the vehicle. But these are some of the, uh, I think that's the front uh, grill. So again, it's really uh, nicely uh, detailed. I think that's on top of the, what I'm gonna call the, like the bonnet basically. Um, so that will connect to basically there. Um, but you know, really nice detail. Now you can get an upgrade part with the slats to go in and replace um, replace that. Um, again, I kind of considered it, but just looking at it, it it's not really needed, uh, in my opinion. Uh, very much a optional extra um, there. Even some of the stuff that goes with inside the cab, um, I don't think you really need. Um, the replacement parts um, for that at all. The tracks again really nicely detailed and very nicely uh, molded. Um, so we've got basically three parts um, for it. So we've got the two uh, like connecting links and then the, the cleat itself. Um, these look very much the same as um, same way they go together for the uh, metal, uh, white metal versions of these. Um, they seem to be pretty much a similar uh, way of going together. Um, again, ejector pin marks there. Um, possibly you could get away with it, depends on how you're going to weather it. I mean, I'm going to try and put quite a bit of mud uh, within uh, the tracks. So, might get away with it, possibly. Um, I'll have to see a little bit later on. Oh, actually, no, thinking about it, looking at it, you might actually get away with it because the see the see, see the little pins there. Obviously, they're going to go into there, so it's going to make like a little like a little box around uh, that ejector pin mark. So, what I might do is I'll, I'll sort of test, try and test fit one or fit one to make one or two together and make sure that they go on the top just in case if they they are visible um, I'll have to put those two on the top somewhere so you can't see them um, and then clean out the rest um, but potentially they might be hidden so we will see again when we get into the build so that's really it for the kit so uh, I guess it's back to me So there we go, my friends. Uh, that's uh, the review of the kit. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, it's going to be an absolute banger of a kit, I think. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, there's a lot of ejector pin marks uh, in there, but since having another look at it, um, majority of which aren't going to be actually really going to be all that much of a problem. Um, they all seem to be relatively hidden away. The only uh, problems with those you can see is within the cab um, but at the same time I'm not actually quite sure how well you're going to be able to see inside the cab anyway uh, particularly with this one I'm going to do the IDF uh, version uh, well, actually to be fair even the Iraq, the, the US version um, they've got tinted windows so I'm not sure on how well um, you're really going to be able to see in there anyway and that's even with the door uh, open so we'll have a look uh, when we get there so, 
I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed. I hope you're excited as I am uh, about this series. Uh, says I think it's going to be a real cracker of a kit to build. So all that's left for me to say is thank you guys ever so much. Do hope you've enjoyed. If you're new around here, um, maybe look at some other videos. <laughs> uh, and if you do like it, um, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Obviously, if you put bell notifications on, which obviously is going to tell you when the next uh, video is available for your viewing pleasure. Also, if you guys would like to uh, help support the channel, there are links in the description below. And I'd also like to thank you guys that have donated so far. Everything you guys donate comes straight back uh, into the channel, it doesn't go anywhere uh, else. Um, so again, for you guys that have donated, thank you ever so much. It's greatly appreciated. So again, thank you and I'll see you guys soon.